on any of our presentations yesterday and it is on a very interesting subject, innovative approaches to advance your food safety goals. And to present this, I would like to call on stage with a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, our presenter, Mr. Sudeep Chatterjee, Application Manager from Ecolab. Can we have a big round of applause for Mr. Chatterjee from Ecolab? <laughs> Mr. Chatterjee, welcome to the stage and looking forward to a cracking session from you. Sorry, let me just check this uh, remote. So today we'll discuss on these innovative approaches to advance your food safety goals. Just to talk uh, some words on Ecolab. Ecolab is the global leader in the water hygiene and infection prevention solutions and services. Every day we help make the world cleaner, safer and healthier, protecting people and vital resources. So we are operating more than 170 countries globally. So let's discuss on what are the top three challenges in a food and beverage plant. So as we hear from the food manufacturers, so the top three challenges here are first one, how can we tackle biofilms? How can we ensure consistent product quality? And can we reduce yeast and mold levels in production areas? So the question here is, don't we have this solution today? Answer is yes, we have. And that's the reason we are running our operation. But the point here is, what you can do next? How can we further improve what we are getting the result today? So here the point comes on the innovations. And we'll see here how can innovations advance your food safety. So let's discuss the challenge number one. How can we tackle biofilms? So when you talk on biofilms, the first thing what it definitely comes to our mind is the pathogen. So pathogen is something definitely we'll never want to see in our premises because these are the hazards. And if it is contaminating our food, there are highly chance that there could be some recall. And we have also heard some recalls from many markets because of this pathogenic contamination. So what can make these pathogens or many other microorganisms strong into the process? They form this biofilm. So what are the biofilms? So biofilms, it is basically you know, the matrix of uh, the different microorganisms and uh, they're basically getting protected uh, by the polysaccharide, exopolysaccharide layers, uh, which has been formed because when they get the very conducive environment uh, where they get enough food, water, and then they form this layer. So as this layer grows and become bigger, it slowly becomes more resistant to the different sanitizers, and then the issue comes in. So there are certain examples, like we know the biofilms, uh, like the slime, that is a biofilm, and we can see in the water line, and sometimes in our product line as well, if there is any leakage in the product or water. Or there could be dry biofilms as well. Some can be visible, some are not. 
A very practical experience, uh, I just, can you run this video? If, yeah, so this you can see, this is done in our Ecolab uh, at uh, US, in Egan. So you can see what is coming out, this is the viable, okay. And it's of the Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Pseudomonas aeruginosa is considered as one of the architect of the weapons. So you can see, uh, this polysaccharide layer, what you can see, it is very resistant uh, against many, you know, sanitizers. So what is the solution? The solution today here is the advanced sanitizer and disinfection that kills biofilms. So if you see here, this is the log reduction data. So uh, the performance of these advanced sanitizers, if we compare against the readily available today, like the quaternary ammonium compounds or the mixed parasitic acids or the parasitic acid, here we see the log reduction of this advanced sanitizer is above log six, which is considered as one of the best. So what it has, it has the biofilm reduction claims at foot contact, and it can also be used as a no rinse sanitizer when used under recommended concentration. It reduces the spoilage causing microorganisms that impact product shelf life. So if you see under the electronic scanning microscope, the uh, left side, what you see is before the treatment, the organisms and post sanitizer, the treatment, what you can see their white spots, those are called the blebs, or it is uh, like a blister, what you can also say. And this formation is called the blebbing process. And through this blebbing, it basically ruptured the cell wall and penetrates through the cell wall, kills the complete to the nucleus, goes inside the nucleus, kills it, completely eradicate the microorganism. Our next challenge, can you reduce yeast and mole levels in the production areas? Now, when we consider the production in the open atmosphere, open atmosphere means in a closed room, but it is open. And those are considered in the high risk zone. And like if you just divide in the zone Y, so this is in the zone one, direct food contact. So what do we do? We do a very good cleaning and sanitation on the food contact surface to ensure there is no cross contamination. But what will happen if your air is not sanitized. So the microbial contamination, what is already there in the air, so that will contaminate those food. And what could be the consequences? So if you see the appearance. And if you see this type of appearance in the shelf, definitely not purchase this product. So the consequences, as you see, it is a risk in the food safety incident. There could be chances of the market complaints, it's high market complaints, which can definitely go as a market recall. And definitely we'll never want for this to happen. So what is the solution today? We do the fogging. We do the fogging at the end of the day or once in a week. And during the fogging, we completely evacuate the room, don't operate our production, and then we hold the room for 30 minutes to around four hours till the fogging happens. So we get a very good result. But think of, this week I have done the fogging. Again, I will do the fogging the next week. So there is around five to six days in between. So there is high chance in this five to six days my air can again get contaminated because there is a manpower movement. Could be the positive air pressure may not working or maybe there are multiple other reasons. So what it is needed or what we are looking is like my air should remain sanitized or the microbial contamination should be within the level of control. So what we do here, what the new innovation says, the new innovation talks on the operational fogging, that means during the operation, no need to stop the operation, no require, is not required to evacuate the room. People can work. So it is during both the production and the non-production. So important is during the production we can run this fogging. So if you see here, this is a very simple, operational it is very simple. So 
It could be a portable machine or it can be wall mounted as well. And there is a controller device. So through this controller device, you can control the, uh, you know, the dosage, basis the room size. And this is a real time case study where you can see from uh, the count of above 100. So after this new fogging program, or what you call the program name is a year specs. So we can get consistently below 10 micro throughout. So it is giving an at least an assurance like if I, through this program, I can reduce a 90% of the micro load in the year. So this will help me to reduce the micro load in my product at least by 90% when it considers a contamination from air. The third point, how can we ensure consistent product quality? So product quality depends on many factors. And we had a discussion in the, today, the first session, and yesterday as well. There are so many hazards that can control this product quality. So we can start from the raw material to the process, handling, and the hygiene operation. And that's why cleaning and sanitation is also considered as a prerequisites for the food safety management system. So as the advancement in the manufacturing operation had happened, simultaneously the advance, advancement in the cleaning and sanitation has also progressed. So let's see how. So we have started it with the basic hygiene. Now basic hygiene concept here, it's with a very conventional cleaners. Now the conventional cleaners have certain limitations. And that's why we had gone to the next level. And that is the advanced hygiene. In the advanced hygiene, we talk on the advanced and premium cleaners and the sanitizers. So these advanced cleaners helps us to clean the very tough to clean soils, like the very polymerized burnt on soils. And the sanitizer that helps us to give a better log reduction and can kill the target microorganisms. But we have not stopped here. What is the next? So next, we wanted to get a very good control. And that's why the basic data integration. So here, what we take the support of the PLC, where we can feed the parameters, and uh, the system controls, or it is interlocked with the parameters. So if there is any deviation in the parameters, the system holds it. That is given as an assurance, yes, my deviation in the CIP process, the cleaning in place process, is minimized. And from this CADA, we can pull out any data, my previous data, into the cleaning. And that will also help us to analyze if there is any wrong. But what is the next? We can stop here. Next is the digital solutions. And yesterday we had a very good session on the digital solutions as well. So this gives us the hygiene assurance, mitigate the hygiene risk, deeper insight and the trending. So as cleaning and sanitation, as I told, it is uh, one of the prerequisites. So it is important to monitor each and every wash of the CIP. Now, how can you monitor or verify each and every wash? Because as it is controlling our, you know, the food safety, so it's important to monitor each one. Now, what we do today, we do a verification. We do a verification basis on our master sanitation plan. And maybe do weekly, maybe, you know, uh, like monthly or quarterly. Or we take the micro samples and the result we get generally after 24 hours or after three days, five days, depending on the type of microorganism. So how we'll monitor every CAP? Now, there are many sites where more than 50 CAPs are performed in a day. How we'll monitor? It's impossible. And if you don't monitor, we are not so confident. Yes, we have the SCADA, so we can definitely get the data of what had happened. But we need to go through the, that is a postmortem. Now, how we'll assure it? 
And here this digital platform is support us. It monitors each and every cleaning. Or other way we can say this is giving us a conformance on the cleaning. It gives us the cleaning conformance score. How much cleaning, how many cleanings had passed our validated protocol? How many cleans had really followed what are the four factors? The time, temperature, chemical action, and the mechanical action. Is there any deviation in the process? And this way, it gives an assurance on the product quality and the risk mitigation. Now, if we just consider as a control, control point of a cleaning parameters. So there is a target, there is an optimum point. Now, anything below that point is what? There is a quality risk. But anything is above that, it is a sustainability risk. Sustainability risk in the sense means it consumes more water, more energy. Of course, that is also definitely we are not looking at because our objective is again to make this cleaning operation as much as optimum. So it helps in the productivity and the sustainability. So if we see this digital platform as a whole, it helps us in getting the better cleaning and sanitation, assuring the food safety, plus the sustainable solution. It gives us an idea whether we are deviating or how much we are devi deviating from our standard protocol or from our standard optimum data. So each and every point, we understand where actually losing and how much we are losing and where we can do that real TCO gains. So it basically gives us three answers, or three questions. Ask us three questions. Do you clean? Do you clean efficiently? And do you clean optimally? So if I just summarize it in a way like it simplifies the complex data. So as we told, if you're doing more than 50, 100 cleanings in a day, so it simplifies, it gives a dashboard, and it says us, how the cleaning performance, is there any deviation? If there is a deviation, where is the deviation? And how much is the deviation? It highlights the risk. When it will highlight the risk, so it is allowing us to focus very specific wherein you take the actions. And it transforms our goal in the reality. So when you what is our goal? What is our KPI? If you see any cleaning operation, it's a downtime. If you don't the cleaning operation, what will happen? You can have more time for production. But if you don't do it, there is a qualitative issue. It can go to a market complaint. So you're bound to do it. But what we need to look at, how much I can optimize it? How much in how many or what time? How much time I can reduce? in the cleaning operation. So for that, the digital platform helps us to understand where exactly I need to take the action. And to support this, we have our team in the Ecolab Global Intelligence Center, or in short, we call it as EGIC, which supports 24 by 7 by 365 days, and this is situated in Pune, from where we support to more than 100 sites globally in this platform. So to summarize the discussion, what you had, these are the three critical challenges, what you see in the food industries, and what the solutions, what are the better solutions we have today to control these risks. So to know more, you can please contact Anuradha Desai. She's our marketing manager and she's here today. And of course me, I'm the application lead for Ecolab. So 
for any more details, any further details on this program, we can, we'll be really happy to hear from you on this and we'll be more than happy to answer if you have any queries on this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sudeep, for that uh, wonderful presentation on innovative approaches to advance your food safety goals. Uh, I would now like to call on stage uh, Mr. Pankaj Agarwal, uh, Chief Operating Officer from Bikanerwala Foods, to kindly do the honors. Pankaj, thank you so much uh, for doing the honors. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sudeep Chatterjee, Application Manager from Ecolab who presented on innovative approaches to advance your food safety goals.